All right, sis, give us a jingle. Spotlight session with T.S. Madison. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, with the show bit. What's up, everybody? This is your girl, T.S. Madison, honey, and welcome to another edition of Spotlight Session with none other than who? <laughs> Me. Tonight, my very special guest is one of RuPaul's Drag Race's, I would say, greatest lip sync assassins, honey, and at uh, Miami's very own by way of Atlanta's finest. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Trinity K. Bonet. Oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, like I told you earlier, honey, the lip sync assassin herself, honey, all the way from Miami, Florida, by way of Atlanta, Georgia. Please welcome to the spotlight, Miss Trinity Kardashian Bonet. Hi, 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 <laughs> hi, hi. I'm too excited to be here. Oh my God. How about <laughs> TKB? Period. All the way from College Park. But you are from College Park, but you from Miami. Yeah. Period. You, all the way from Miami. You're all the way from Miami, Florida. Yeah. So I just want to jump right on into it. You know, I've created a spotlight session because I like to shine light. I like to shine a light on people who I find interesting, and you know, also people that I know. That I know things about that I feel like that the people should know more about. You've been on one of the biggest platforms. That's going on right now in this new age, RuPaul's Drag Race. Season six, was it not? Mm -hmm. It was season six. And they're on season 12. 60 years <laughs> have passed. Okay. I, I, how do you feel about that? I just want to start with how do you feel about that? Because I know, I think I know how you feel, and I think I know how you feel and a few other black queens feel when it comes down to stuff like that, you know, when they try to, you know, use mother's name and stuff like that, you know. But I just want to know right now how you feel. And then we're going to we're gonna dig deep into that on the spotlight because you, you've been a very vocal RuPaul's Drag Race girl. How, how do you feel about that? Um, well, first and foremost... Season 12. Season 12. Um, giving honor and thanks to mother for the opportunity to showcase myself and travel the world. Mm -hmm. There has been many um, opportunities and things that have happened in the six years that I've been on RuPaul's Drag Race that I felt um, I could have had a, a foot in, had an opportunity to showcase myself and my talents. Um, and, of course, we could pull the race card or the favoritism and, you know, things of that nature. But I think what happens is, is when you grow up and you look back at life, mm -hmm. you kind of understand and realize why you're put in certain positions. I think that had I played my cards a little differently when I was on the show, that my uh, future would have played out a little different. I am extremely grateful okay. as to everything that I have because I feel like God only gives you as much as you can handle. Okay. So I'm not ungrateful at all. But this is a game, and you have to play the game a certain type of way. If you go into something um, blindsided and not aware of what the, the atmosphere is, they can play the game against you. But if you go in knowing what you're getting yourself into, you can play it differently. So you, so basically, what you're saying is that you walked in on a television competition show, knowing that it was a television competition no, show. No, I walked in on a television competition. I walked in on a television show, thinking like a patron. I I walked in thinking, oh, I'm only gonna be here for two or three hours because the show only filmed for 45 minutes. I'm not thinking about 15 hour days. I'm not thinking about long uh, cold studios. I'm not thinking about long taping hours and confessionals and having to repeat yourself. I'm not thinking that if they give me this script, I have to learn all this stuff and get in drag and be my absolute best the first time. And if not, they're gonna put the creepy music behind me and make it seem like I don't know what I'm doing. And then you start to mentally think to yourself, you start questioning your drag and questioning your ability like, is it me? Am I doing something wrong? You know, it's it will mentally mess with you. But that's going into the situation not knowing how to play the game. 
Because all you got to do is go in and smile, enjoy yourself. And I'm not going to say make a fool of yourself or act a fool, but it's all about getting a laugh. At the end of the day, whatever the scenario is, they want to laugh out of it. And if you can't laugh at yourself, how are you going to laugh at somebody else? Right. So, okay, let me play devil's advocate a little bit here. So you said you walked into RuPaul's Drag Race as a as a viewer. Mm-hmm. Not as a competitor at first. I mean, as a competitor, but just from a viewer standpoint. Yeah. Okay, so when you got into it, you were overwhelmed by the fact that you had to... 15-hour days, confessionals, take all the stuff that you just said. But why was that... Sh- like, what did you think reality TV was? I, I, I had no clue. I see, this, 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 first of all, going on the show, I was, what, maybe 21 or 22? And and how that even came about. Oh, here we go. And how that even came about. Here we go. I, we got to bring it up. I never speak about these but things. You, but you always... I mean, it is what it is. I never speak about it. Sitting them. there with you... Okay. At our old girlfriend's house. Mm-hmm. And you just, like, giving me my... You need to go on Drag Race. I and, even, and you guys, let's just be clear. This is way. These this is years ago. This is way before the Maddie Mop. This, this is Madison ain't. <laughs> first of all, I was sitting there arguing with her about why you won't even come to the gay bar. Why you won't hang? You know, like if we didn't see her at at Tasia House or meet up for lunch, it wasn't happening. So for her to encourage me so much to go on this show, and then my boyfriend at the time was sitting there and. I can remember you just saying, you need to audition for this show. It's going to change your life. It's going to take you where you need to be at. And I'm thinking to myself, I just like to do the show. I'm just a drag queen who like to perform. It, it's never been about mainstream and being a celebrity. And even to this day, I don't like the idea of being a celebrity because I like that separation and balance of normalcy and, you know, and then being able to do my art. But I, I knew that what was going to come with it, but I didn't know what was going to come with it. And then when you encouraged me, I was like, okay, why not? Got home, boyfriend was like, well, let's do the tape. So basically, what she's, <laughs> what she's saying, I'm going to bask in it just a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> I never Thank do, though, Trinity. I never do. Like, you've never heard me stand up and say, like, I've never been in any, any places. Basically, the reason why Trinity K. Bonet was on RuPaul's Drag Race is because of T.S. Madison. We were in a space at Tasia's house. Tasia was sewing me a gown up for uh, an, award show. an award show. And, you know, we were sitting there talking and stuff. And, and, I, and I, I've and i seen you perform. I've, all this stuff, like, I already knew what was going on. And I, RuPaul's Drag Race was in its sixth, well, fifth season. Right? Probably, uh, yeah. Fourth? Yeah. It was in its fourth season or something, whatever. And I said, I said, I said, niece, why are you not on that show? You was like, I can't sew. And then you was, I was like, bitch, you think everybody on there know how to fucking sew? You know how to glue. Learned how to. Yeah, but you learned how to sew. You know, I said, this is something that, I said, drag is something that's, that, that's in your blood. It's, it's, it's life to you. Anything that's life to you, it's easy. And you was like, girl, I was like, girl, go do it. It will change your life. You call me maybe later on down the line, uh, Maybe six months, a year. I don't know how long it was that you called me and you said, I took your advice and I went to try and I'm on the show. I remember you called me late in the evening mm-hmm. and you're like, I'm on the show. And, you know, I got really emotional on the inside. Like, you didn't know that, but I got emotional on the inside because it was like I spoke a manifestation into somebody else's life and it transpired. She did. I did. And, I, and it was just like I was so excited and I could not wait to see, you know, what, what you were going to bring because I was like, you know, I planted this seed and it blossomed. And that was the year that I actually had an opportunity to meet RuPaul. Mm-hmm. Because at the reunion, you know, we were at the, uh, we were, we were at, because RuPaul had been follow, start following me and um, was uh, posting stuff about me on his on his stories and, you know, on his vine, you know, loved me. Mm-hmm. And then when we got the opportunity to meet, it was when you, which they cut out of the taping, you, you, you said, RuPaul, I'm here because of that lady sitting out there in the audience right now, T.S. Madison. And RuPaul stood up and said, is T.S. Madison in the house? Mm-hmm. Where you at, girl? No way, no way, <laughs> 22 inches. I was like, yes. He said, I love you, mama. You know, and and that's how that's how our our actual first getting with each other started. Like we have been communicating via social media 
But that's how it happened. And then I was so happy to see you go so far in the competition. Garner new fan base. Gather, you know, just exposure for who you are. I was so happy to see that because I was like, this stuff going to change this girl life. I, I, knew, I said that sitting down in Texas, I was getting a dress made for me. You know, I didn't give a damn about all that gay stuff. <laughs> At all? I ain't give a fuck about going to no gay club. I ain't Born give a fuck bothered. about going. I was not bothered. Baby, if they didn't, if the bitch ain't got my money. Well, and it's, and it's, that's kind of like that still to this day. <laughs> Let's just be clear. Baby. Well, I. Be we need our ducats. Well, right, I believe <laughs> the reason why I had that, that space built up with me is because I feel like the gay kids are catty. Mm -hmm. Unnecessarily catty, mm -hmm. shady, superficial. Uh, 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 the, the last people that should be judging somebody, but the first ones on the judgment seat. You get what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. it's just like I just separated myself from that. I'm like, girl, I don't have time for that because you know, at the time, I was still in the adult entertainment field. I was just my career was just crossing over into mainstream, just. And I was like, girl, you know, I don't give a fuck about them. All they're going to do is talk about how I do porn, I do this and the other. You know, fuck them hoes. Bitch, please, you know. And he was like, auntie, come on. I was like, man, yes, fuck man. them hoes. I told you. And I'll never forget that night you came, You just came out to the jungle. It was a holiday. I remember what it was for. But baby, Martin Luther King. They. I had a booking. They. I had, a book, I had a booking earlier that screamed in the building when you walked and in. They do and, it, and they for do it. me, yeah. it, just, it, it just justified what I said from the beginning. They, those those type of gays do exist, mm -hmm. but there are a whole lot more who live and breathe. I know. And those are the ones that we embrace. I know we embrace those, Trinity, but for me, what I've learned, and I'm, and I'm quite sure you can attest to this, your rising as a RuPaul's, because first of all, let's speak about it, RuPaul's drag race girl that lives with you forever. Yep. And the day. So RuPaul's Drag Race Girl, you your tape, your audition tape got you in and got you through. You can't tell me one time that you was not met with adversity, hostility, envy, and hate from bitches that was just around you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Shit, to this day. Who who <laughs> you who you supposed to be? You ain't shit. You oh, ain't no. I tell you, I don't, I don't have people because, because if you really get into my story, I didn't finish school. Like when I moved to Atlanta, I moved to Atlanta when I was sixteen or fifteen, one of the two, mm -hmm. and it was immediately from moving here, leaving home, and started doing shows. So my whole all from fifteen on back, this is what I've been doing. This mm -hmm. is what I know, and I've had people who have just recently who was family, gay supposed to be gay family, mm -hmm. who have said things like, um. She doesn't. She's not deserving of the stuff that she's gotten. Like my articles on, you know, page six and the, the BMA award I won yeah, and got, being on got, Ellen. You got and, a moon man. Yeah, I got him. I don't. Yeah, in the hood. You got a fucking. You got <laughs> a, a moon fucking man. moon man. <laughs> like you know, these are things that I've accomplished just being myself, being artistically who I am. And there's people who genuinely don't feel like you are deserving of the things that you've gotten, as if. I went out and paid for it, or it was just given to me, you know, out of sympathy. Like I worked. But this is this, this is this, this takes us back to the conversation. This is what I was explaining to you when we when we were at Tasia's house. I said, "Girl, I didn't want to be in the, the profession that I'm in. I can't help that I got it, and it was a boss in it, and the rest of them bitches, motherfucking, was tired in it. That they they didn't know how to make it work for them, and it worked for me. Yeah, it was it's not it was not my fault, you know." That you know, you know a bitch that done did two two homemade videos and and called herself a porn star. And next thing you know, girl, <laughs> you know they y'all re, we not in the same class. No, not at all. I I, I, I created a business, but it, but this is not about me. This is about you, cause girl, we'll go to talking. <laughs> but this is about you. So, you see, up to season twelve, you. You hear and you watching it and you like, you know, it's so many different things. You haven't been on All, All Stars yet. Yet. After Ellen, after all, all after all of the stuff that I've 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 done. And 
Yeah, no. But I'm waiting my time. You have Cause, to. Because when I get there, it's motherfucking curtains. They can hang it up. And ain't nothing you're going to be able to throw at me that's going to throw me off. I'm all smiles and giggles. I'm here to enjoy. I am going to enjoy myself. And enjoy slaughtering. Oh. Because you do have a slaughter plan going on. Much, as long as they allow me to be there. Because if they keep the same shit up, <laughs> how they've been eliminating girls, one of them going to get me out of there. They know what I kill. That's the, that's the thing about, that. first of all, and let me say, I, I, I always have a love for Drag Race, and I will continue to always have a love for Drag Race. I've been watching every season up, even after I left. I ain't watched much of my own season because I was on there, and I knew what I gave, so I was kind of like, eh. But anything before and after, I've watched. I, <clears throat> I'm happy for the new seasons and all the stuff that's going on, but I just feel like there's just too many of us that people haven't, like, they, that they're not, they're not utilizing enough of the girls. But on the flip side of that, reality TV is, you know, there's, from reality shows, there's some stars and they're not. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to, I really don't know how to explain. I mean, what do you think? Like, what do you, what do you think it is? Uh, you want my honest opinion? Yeah. I'd say, what, yes. We live in a white man's world. Well, yeah. I do think that, you know, things can have more diversity. I agree. I agree. Skin tone wise, identity wise. Now, if we're going to go there, we're going to go there. Yeah, I'm not. No, granted, see, that's the thing, though. Because for me, I don't. Do you feel like that it has been fair for you after RuPaul's Drag Race? I don't. I don't. I think it has been. I think it's been. I think it's been good for me. And I think it's been what it was supposed to be. I, I try to. I try to have a positive mindset about things and not think that people are just vindictive and malicious or think that they think that way. I think about it as like business. For me, when it came to All-Stars, most of the girls, most other girls who got on All-Stars or who have been getting on have gotten on from later seasons. Now, because they moved to BH1, the fan base has blown up even bigger. If you can get on this show, like prime example, my girl for season 12 is Jada. Jada had 14,000 Instagram followers. Jada had 14,000 Instagram followers. The minute that they announced her that she was on the show, by that night she had thirty six or something somewhere up in that number. Ain't no ain't no episodes came out. This is based off of a picture and a promo. Your numbers fly. I was on season six. That was six years ago. I still own, I'm just two hundred and ninety one thousand followers on Instagram. After six years of being on that show, these girls are getting five and six and seven hundred thousand followers in weeks at a time because of the show. So as a producer. I'm thinking, they're thinking, well, shit, we're going to use the girls who are building a fan base faster because those people are going to continue to watch them. It's numbers. It, I don't have, my numbers don't add up. Yes, I'm entertaining. Yes, I'm legendary. Yes, I'm the lip sync assassin. Yes, I've grown in my drag, but my numbers aren't adding up. That's why I don't think they put me on the tours. Not to say that I, one person is going to make a difference, but if we can have all these headliners and we know that each person has 500,000 people in itself, we are guaranteed to sell the tickets we want because they support us, follow them. I'm getting numbers. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm hoping that it is. And that it's just like, like oh, these are girlfriends and we're going to keep using them. Which, in most cases, it, it that's probably the case. But I just, I just, I, I love my family. I wouldn't be where I'm at in my career if it wasn't for the Drag Race family. And I just like to think that, you know, it's business. And for me, this opportunities like this that you're giving me to put myself out there any little airtime is enough for me to continue catapulting who i am as a person mm -hmm. and growing mm -hmm. so when they give me that time it's, it's so you are so you think it's well overdue that you should have been yes most definitely but, but i had the opportunity i had the opportunity they called me they, they actually called me three times they called me three times the first time they called me and i'm just keeping it real i had a warrant here in georgia and they ran, and uh, BH1 runs background, and it was for a driver ticket. 
It's just, it's just a little bench warrant. But I freaked out and w- said something, which I could have just handled it, did the application a bit fine, but I said something to them. And I think because I said something to them, that may have scared them off because Blair Sinclair had just got on the show and she had just got on probation. And that was in the media. So I think they were thinking, they always thinking like, you know, what's going to make us look bad? What's going to, you know, stuff like that. I, and I'm thinking for them. I don't know. It could be the case or could not be. Then the second time they called me, they asked me, well, you know, well, you couldn't get on this. They called and said, well, we can't use you this time. Because of that, then they called me again. The next year was like, well, you know, are you interested? Yes. I started preparing. I didn't get on. They called me for five. They asked me, was I interested? I said, yes. I started preparing, did, got all the way down to the end, and they ended up not using me. The week after that, I was on the Ellen show. So, so what, I just felt like I just, I, I, I well, you lost do, one and gained one. Well, you do know that every no is necessary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People have to understand that every single no that you get is a necessary no. Mm-hmm. So that when that yes comes around, and, and the seasons and the planets and the stars and everything line up for you to get what's yours. Those no's were necessary because you wouldn't have got it in that pla- in that place. Yeah. So let's talk about RuPaul's Drag Race and color. Okay. You have you experienced these the, the things that a lot of the girls talk about uh, openly being you know African American girls like they 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 they, they say that they don't um, book they're not booked this much. Or they're not um, used as much, and it's a lot of things. You know, it's I, a lot of stuff I, the black girls say. Yeah, but I, but I, but I, but they still working. All the girls that are, I ain't been to no uh, life ball. I haven't been on um, half the TV shows that they've been on. I was next to be on AJ and the Queen, I, and I see black girls and all that. Hmm. I mean, I just, I'm not, I'm not understanding where y'all not working, y'all. There's black girls on the tours. There's a, there's black girls on the Vegas show. There's black girls on Drag Race. I mean, I don't, I, it's, it's one, it's either, either y'all want what a whole show just full, just all black, or you, you know, you gonna be good enough to get in. This is still a television show. What a lot of girls, first of all, even with auditioning, what people fail to realize is that you have to be interesting to be on television. If not interesting, have a story. You can't just go on there thinking that you're fab. Oh, my name is so-and-so. This is my closet. This is how I perform. That's it. No, you don't want to be intimate and open about who you are. I came out and told them people that I was HIV positive because I was open and fine with that. I was content with that. So was that your first time uh, giving that information out publicly? Yeah. Well, other than... Well, no, because when I found out, I had a boyfriend at the time. So... In that arena, yes. But I had all intents on doing it on the show because it. I just felt like I needed. I needed to. I I needed to do it. There was not a lot of representation out there of black men of color who were openly positive and and successful and happy. You know, so other than Magic Johnson, but he wasn't black and gay and, mm-hmm. and a drag queen. Like you got all these strikes against myself. So yeah, it it just was necessary for me to say that, um, and thank God I did because so many amazing things have came, even and I forgot to talk like I did the twenty four city tour in Canada last year of October by myself, one rude girl, in every single city, some the people came out to see me. Twenty four cities. Twenty four cities in Canada. In Canada, thirty days. Mm. Twenty four cities. Went to the smallest cities you could think of, all the way up to Little Rock, which uh. Yellow Rock, which is where you see the Northern Lights, like the few places in the world where you can see them, which is absolutely beautiful. Mm. Yeah, like I'm, I'm making them. I'm making a shake, huh? I'm so, making a shake. So basically, <laughs> you are very, you're, you're happy that you've done RuPaul's Drag Race, yeah. and that, and it's, and it, and it, and it has grown your life. Yeah. Um, I want more. I want, I want, I want, I want to be on the strip too. I want to do the Vegas show. How much they getting paid? I don't know, but the Vegas show is amazing. We just were there. Oh, was it? See, I want, I want, I want to go and see it. 
I want to be up there too. I want any opportunities that's involving Drag Race. If they will allow me to be a part of it, I would love to be a part of it. I just there's not a lot of invitations though. I'll say that there, I'm not getting emails saying, "Hey, we're doing this." Some stuff, but throughout it's kind of slowed down throughout the years. Like I ain't even get no email to be a drag con uh, LA this year. Like it just it just it's like you fade out a little bit, which is kind of scary because when you do this as a career, you think to yourself. Is it slowing down for me? That's why I, I'm, I'm still into pageantry because pageantry is that small little vessel that allows you to still be visible amongst your community, which I was lucky enough to win this festival. Yes, congratulations on Thank that. You. I was going to definitely okay, congratulate you on winning Miss Westland. Because here was my question, Trinity, and, and I'm going to be so transparent and honest with you. And I'm not going I'm not shading anybody that's, that might be think that I'm shading them watching. I was like, girl, because I remember at times you were very emotional about running for these pageants and them not letting you in, not giving you the medal when you so deserved it. Even when I felt like, damn, you, you killed it. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I used to be like, girl, you have RuPaul's Drag Race. It. Why are you letting those girls, you know, make you feel like that you ain't the shit when you don't, you know, jump one of the biggest feats that they can. And I was like, why did you return back into that that pageant world or back into that world? Because you know, I don't really give a damn how the people feel about me. I don't never have to set foot out in the bar, ever, and I'll eat still. But so I'm saying this because. The, the girls can make you feel like it's like going back to the earlier part of our conversation. You ain't shit. You ain't did nothing. You just like me. When in all actuality, you are not. Mm -hmm. You have accomplished. You have done things. You, you've occupied spaces that they cannot or they will not occupy. And you still haven't made them feel like that you were you were better than them. You still haven't done that because, you know, even me. I'm not going to sit up here and sugarcoat it. I've occupied spaces, been in, I had opportunities, you know, made all types of money with people that they will never speak to in life. And those bitches still be with the, the bullshit. Like, <laughs> you know, not that they're supposed to respect because those are my accomplishments. Mm -hmm. But don't underwhelm them like they ain't happy. Bitch, you was on RuPaul's Drag Race season six, girl. That was, that was one of the best seasons out of the franchise. It's, it, it, it birthed one of the longest running queens, Bianca Del Rio, because she's still the reigning queen in my eyes. And she is. I like all the other girls. I do. But it was just, season six was, it was like a turning point. for Was y'all still on Logo? Mm -hmm. After season six, seven was on what? VH1? I think seven was low. I think eight was VH1. Eight was nine. V. Nine was nine VH1. Was nine, oh. ten, eleven, so yeah. Yeah. Well, six was six was a great season, and which was a list of season five. Yeah. Yeah, five and six. I did enjoy five and six. Mm -hmm. Now, so that was why did you go back to the pageantry system like, and go back and endure all that? Um. They were treating you some kind of way? Well, no. Pageants, I, I grew up, I started with pageants. Like, that's why I, I, I started. So it was, it's one, a love. It's a, it's a, it's a love that I have. Um, the idea of reigning certain systems and being a part of certain families. I did Westland eight years ago mm -hmm. against Tasia. Mm -hmm. I got first to her. And it's just always been in my heart to be a part of something like that. The thing with me is, is just how I feel about going back on Drag Race and All Stars mm. is how I feel about pageantry. Mm. The difference between pageants and, and All Stars is, is I have the opportunity, if I lose, I have I can come back next year. I haven't been granted that opportunity with Drag Race. And had I been given that opportunity with Drag Race, my future would be a little different because I would be, uh, I wouldn't say more relevant, but I would be more visible to more people given the opportunity to do more things, and I won't have the time to focus or prepare for a pageant. I have been given and granted time to prepare because I am not working as much as other girls are. 
you know, and I still love entertaining and performing and traveling and being around the world and stuff. And on the flip side of that, because I have the platform that I have, and I don't think pageantry is respected enough in the drag community. The only pageant people see is Drag Race. And to me, it is a pageant. You get a crown of a sector, you get a cash prize, you're two for a year, you're a queen. You know, so that's that's a pageant to me. It's 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 the rules and regulations are a little different, but it's a pageant. And that's a crown that I want as well. i they have to grant me that opportunity to get it. Like they have to allow me to get back on there to get it. And you know, I, I, in the meantime, I'm just gonna make it shake and do what I do. There's other hats that I want, and you know, I'll just continue to get that. Who's who's to say that they'll ever have another All Stars? Who's to say that they'll well, ever I call mean, me? They, are, they, they currently have an All Stars coming. Well, yeah, they yeah, but whose fault is that? Sorry, that's all right. Yeah, you know who's to say that? That might be them calling you. <laughs> 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 but yeah, shit. you know, who's to say that they'll have another All-Stars? And I just don't want to be sitting around waiting on them, which I did for the last three years. I, I I built things around Drag Race, like waiting on the call, like, girl, like, I'm, I'm, you're going to get on, you're going to get on, you're going to get on. Mm -hmm. And it didn't happen. And I said, you know, if I won Westland, then I was going to give Westland all of me. And everywhere I go for this whole year, I'm going to wear this W and I'm going to wear my crown. Well, that's good. When I go to, when I go to drag con this year, I'm going to walk down that pink carpet with my crown and my sash on. I want that community, that drag race community, to respect pageantry just as much. Y'all go ballistic over these girls and spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars to go to these events that only happen sporadic throughout the year. But they have drag and pageants in your backyard all year long. And there's local queens that y'all don't pay no attention to, but the minute they get on the show, oh my God, I live in Brief, but you know, bitch, they've been here. So if y'all love drag this much, go out and support it. It's right here in your backyards. I plan on having Westland looking like salt and pepper next year. I want the blacks and the whites in the building, contestants and patrons. Because if you mess with me now, support me in everything that I do. Not just if you see that I'm coming to a drag race event, you want to see me. No, come support me at this pageant. Fall in love with some new queens. Because there's talent that you ain't never even seen before. Well, the, well the, to play devil's advocate here, you know. I love when you play devil's advocate. I, I am. <laughs> drag race is is uh, and, uh, projected through a broader uh, to a broader audience than mm -hmm. just your back, your back door. Uh or backyard or back whatever it is place where they where drag queens work or, or big clubs where drag queens let me not say because i don't want to sound shady to any club like saying they're back, back right. what i mean is this is vh1 this is behind this is this is in the neighborhood right what do you think would be the cure for that what do you think would be the cure for the it? queen like, be, the queens there's a lot of queens who have who, who have social media followings already. First of all, as you know, back in the day before Drag Race, you had to do a show or a pageant or go out to be visible as an entertainer. You can sit right here in no TV screen and do your makeup or do a drag show online and get tipped and paid off of cash app and stuff. You couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, and these girls want to be fab and fabulous, but they're and, and some of them in some cases are right from the comfort of their own homes. But pageantry does something to you it mold it molds you and there's so many girls that's always like oh i want to you know i want to do what you do baby do a competition do a competition it's all it's all the same i don't know what that fear is and and people want to compete in competitions but do a pageant because with drag race see any pageant you walk into you can pay your entry fee you can walk through all the categories and you are subject to place or win when you audition for drag race they have to pick you that's the upper hand you have. It's so many girls just sitting around waiting for Drag Race to be famous when, no, you need to get the ball running on your career now. You have control over this now because every year you are sitting there waiting on these people to call you and they don't. So you think that they should step, they, they drag they drag pussy up. Yeah, because it's, it's a lot of other visible drag out there. It may not get you the national television exposures you want, but there's a lot of drag out there. And I know personally girls who are being who are putting themselves on platforms and they have not been on Drag Race. Look at the girls that they have featured in Ali and AJ. Uh, Ali. Why I keep saying Ali and AJ? AJ, AJ and the Queen, mm -hmm. uh, Chevelle Brooks and all the, and, and Armani Davenport. All these pageant girls who who are being featured on this show, you know, and they weren't on Drag Race. Like you don't have to wait on this on this show 
to have the platform that you want. Like you, you don't. I, I want to encourage that. Like I want to see more faces out there. I want to see more queens going for things, you know, building their career up versus waiting on something to happen that may never happen. Mm -hmm. Because you can't give them the formula on that tape. There's a formula. You have to possess something. You have to have a story. You got to be vulnerable. You got to open yourself up. And in some cases, you got to be sickening. Or in other cases, you got to be a fool because somebody got to go home first. Right. So let's move a little bit. Let's push Drag Race to the side for just a second and pageantry to the side for just a moment. What has been going on in your personal life? Ooh. Um, my personal life is uh, pretty. I guess it's pretty mm -hmm. regular, pretty traditional. What is, what is traditional and regular? What is it? What is what is a, what is a day like without this? Girl sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch sleep, playing with the dogs, cooking, some or preparing or getting getting Trinity ready for something. I kind of like, for me, when it comes to my drag, like, I'm, I'm. if you know me, you know I'm Trinity and I'm Josh. When I'm Josh, I'm Josh. When I'm Trinity, I'm Trinity. And Right now, you're Trinity Cable Name. Girl, I'm kind of both. Oh. <laughs> I'm kind of both. Oh. Shit. No, um, yeah, right now I'm Trinity Cable Name, but I kind of can have that, this, this really weird separation to where, like, I feel like I'm the manager of me. Mm hmm So I kind of prep stuff and get things ready mm -hmm. and then... You know, I show up and I do the gig. Um, I don't have a lover. I thought I had a lover, but. Yeah, because that's what I was going to get down to. Um, you did openly, you know, disclose your status on RuPaul's Drag Race. Mm -hmm. And so many things happened after that. Good and bad. When it gets down to your love life, with that being an, like a a television televised thing that nobody ever forgets you and you already disclose your status to people that you come in contact with anyway what has it been like what has your dating been like since then it has the status hasn't been the issue it's trinity i i can't tell you the last time i've met somebody and got to know them and, and disclosed my status to them and they they wasn't the same let's just be clear I, I, maybe, like I'm, you, maybe I'm. Maybe I'm. I'd like you to elaborate on that. Please. It, it, there's, it's not many times that I've met or started talking to somebody mm -hmm. or you know conversing and you know I say hey well I'm positive and it's oh okay well you know I am too. Oh okay well cool we got over that hurdle. Well um. What I do for a living is female impersonation. Oh, uh, like you dress up like a girl, yeah. I mean, I don't live as a girl, you know, it's just my career, my, you know, my chosen career, but I'm successful, you know. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. And it just kind of fades away from that. I don't have no issues telling somebody my status dating wise, rather they, and, and granted, I've met people who are negative as well. And even those people were fine with that. They just couldn't get past the Trinity. And then I've had boys tell me, if you didn't look so believable, then, you know, but like, you don't give me drag, you give me girl. So I got to be clown for you to accept it because it's just a little too believable for you. So the status hasn't been the problem. It's no. been the status. The status. The status. The status. That is a great quote. Can I have that? You can. Yeah. You the status isn't the issue. It's the status. It's the status. They don't, it's not my, the health that's the problem. It's who you are. Yeah. And... It had it been even when it was local and it was no money and we were sleeping on the air mattress, eating Roman noodles. Oh, it was cool then because you weren't intimidated and we, you kind of felt like either I met people who were above me or we were on the evil playing field. But now that I am somebody, it's, oh, that's a lot. I was going out. To, girl can't go out to the club because left and right is. Oh, I know. And then they feel some type of way. If I'm a boy, it's not as heavy. But if I'm Trinity, we can't take five steps. Without a hug or a kiss, which is so weird because gays are funny. <laughs> you'll walk in a bar, girl, you're a boy, and they will pay you dust like you ain't nobody. As soon as you put this hat on, your celebrity turn on. Mm. That's why I go out a lot as a guy versus Trinity. Like, if ain't no paper involved, what's the point? Well, you know, that's been my that's motto. a meet and greet if you ask me. That's been my motto since um, day one. Yeah, I don't play 
bitch, I don't play that. Who you got that ISIS tattoo? Oh, <laughs> you one of them. We been, we done bitch, here. I'm here. I done been here today, made a concert. Girl, <laughs> to I'm sorry. <laughs> Bitches, we done got deeper to talking. <laughs> so, yes, so we've gotten down to, it's not the status. It's, it's the status. It's, it's, it's the status. Mm-hmm. And... It's like, do you enjoy, like, is it, is it, is it lonely? Yeah. 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 But, um. So are you lonely right now? No. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like it. Some, something, something, something has kind of shifted in me a little bit. You want it? Oh, I just took it. Good. Warm, warm wine yeah. makes you tipsy. <laughs> warm mm. wine. Mm-hmm. Something in me, the older I get, has kind of shifted. I just had a birthday last, or well, Friday gone, 29 now. Come on, 29. Yeah. Just Come had on. a birthday. Something in me has shifted. It, it's, it's, build your, I, I, all, all the years I kept hearing people say, girl, it's going to come, build your career, do you, blah, blah, blah. You know, you hear that. But it's like okay, I done did. I done came home. Now I want you know I want to be bothered with somebody, and there's nobody to be bothered with. And because of the reasoning, and for many years I blamed Trinity for my unhappiness, and and felt like nobody don't want to be with me because I'm a cross dress and I did this to myself, and you know, and all I want to do is you know, entertain to perform. And what am I doing that's so bad? And men will make you. I've had, I have gotten into a physical fight with a boy, because. He found out I did drag. How he, <laughs> how he, I didn't tell him. We went on a date to a movie. Went, he went to go get, we went to go get popcorn and stuff. I went to go sit down. The butch queen that worked behind the counter at the damn uh, popcorn thing told him, it was like, oh, you know, you, y'all date him, blah, blah, blah. He was like, oh, yeah, we are on a date. He was like, oh, yeah, I remember him from TV. He was like, and that conversation happened from there. They could take this boy came in the theater and just went off on me. I ain't with that gay. Sh- I ain't with that gay shit. Now, mind you, we we on a date. But, but this is strange. Yeah, right. Wait, I'm I'm having. A, I'm trying to tell you, this is really strange. So the homosexual said to you, <laughs> I want to make sure that this is clear. The homosexual gentleman mm-hmm. that likes men, mm-hmm. a man that enjoys the comfort mm-hmm. of a man, the look of a man, the feel, the touch of a man, mm-hmm. doesn't like this gay shit. Mm-hmm. And you wasn't even as Trinity, you were John. Mind you, Auntie, prior to that, living, living. Oh, you so cute. Mind you, we've been talking two weeks on the phone every day, texting, blase, blase, getting on the bus, coming to see me. All this living for me as a boy. So again, it was not your status, it's, it's your, your status. status. My God, today. How did that end up ending? Like, how did it, how did, did y'all? It, it 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 almost got to that, and then it was one of the theaters where they had the food and stuff. So the workers kind of came and like you know, and he ended up leaving, and I paid for the movie, so I stayed and watched it. <laughs> but it it yeah, it is. I've had many odd experiences, many odd experiences when it comes to guys, it, just people like I love you as Josh, but I just can't accept the Trinity part, or I love you as Trinity, but I can't accept the you know so, I don't want to deal so, with no boy. So like, had you already topped him? No. We didn't have sex or nothing. God forbid. He oh, probably girl, really would have jumped on me. Listen, you supposed to got there before y'all went to the... Ain't <laughs> damn bitch going to the movies with me unless they hit, unless I hit that. Auntie, he probably would have took my head off in there. What? And it, they say stuff like that, too. Oh, ain't nobody, ain't no drag queen from the top of me. But I'm not a girl. I'm not a girl. And I can't help that the way that I perceive my drag happens to be more feminine or, you know, feminine looking, but I like what I like. I'm attracted to this certain type of, you know... Woman, this is the type of woman that I want to present myself. That's as. the aesthetic that you want. People right. To see. Okay. So why should I feel bad about how I? It, it's it's crazy. So now I didn't do this earlier in the program. Let's get down to identity mm-hmm. and the way the proper pronouns to use with you. What are the proper pronouns to use with you? He, 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 she, whatever. And you use these pronouns because you do not identify as a transgender woman. Am I correct? No, not at all. You are a drag queen. I am a drag trans. 
Oh dear God. <laughs> I'm just joking. Oh dear God. Oh dear God. <laughs> what? Look, look. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, look, okay, I had made up a new one. Oh, ah. dear God. Okay. No, He's no, 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 no. With a drag trend. No, well, when I say that, I say that because, like I said, my, st- like, when me, I, Trinity is real, real fishy. Like, real girly, girly. I see it. Real yeah. girly, girly. So, that, my, my, I was raised. By trans By tra- mm-hmm. Raquel Lord and Stasha, the sex kittens mm-hmm. of Atlanta mm-hmm. raised me. So, that's why I learned how to, you know, figure out how to be a girl. And they j- just was joking Monday, you are such a girl. And I'm like, I, I'm i really not, but when I get in it, I'm up in it. But I'm Josh. I'm Josh. I'm he, sir. Yeah, and especially, like, if I get in an Uber and I'm like this, because I'm walking up, you can already see the boys kind of like, bitch, my, and I get in their voice be real deep. Hey, how you doing? Okay, very yeah. much so. Very much Man, so. I'm going to break this ice for you now. Very much so, this is a job. Yes. Yes. Yeah, hell this yes. is not an identity. This is a job. Yes. This is a job. One one that I play very well. If so you, when you know. so when the job is over, you still want to be the same he you was when you got into the job. Yeah. I'm the same he in the job <laughs> while I'm doing. This is my uniform. This is my uniform. This is what I do. This is what I love doing. Yeah, and see people need to understand. I try that. I try to I try to confuse the boys and tell them that, you know, I'm an actor. And they say, Well, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean Tyler Perry, Martin Lawrence, they they play the type of woman that they choose to play. Would you consider the them drag queens? No. Okay. I think they're actors. I think any I think like T T, J. Will, I think all of those things are characters and entities. Mm-hmm. Because if you think about people like on drag race, like on my seasons, I always say this. A B C Bianca, Courtney, Adore. All of those people were artists before they were queens. They started getting in drag and it was easier to make their artistry be accepted. Bianca's a comedian. Adora is a singer. Uh, Courtney's a singer. American Idol, American Idol. They are, and then already going into the show, they was over 100,000 followers, which at that time was sickening. Mm-hmm. These are artists. And for me, this is my artistry. Like, I impersonate people. Whitney and, you know, and all it, and then now that I'm trying to get into, like, social media and becoming this character, my biggest dream right now, honestly, is to start doing red carpet correspondence. If I can get on one of them red carpets and hold one of them mics and talk to celebrities, that would be, that I think at that point, my career for Trinity will be set. Because I love fashion, I love talking to people, and I have my own type of personality. And um, I said that on Drag Race on my season that I wanted to do it. When I got to interview Chaz Mono and his mother, I was excited about it, but I'd have messed the man's name up. <laughs> got me something the hell on. So, <laughs> you know, but, girl, did I say it right? Is it Chaz or Chaz? Still, <laughs> all these years, still can't get up. Is it Chaz or Chad? For real, girl. Chaz, I know. <laughs> well, oh well, they'll be strong. No, they yeah, they'll be strong. They'll be strong. And they better be glad I'm a new TS. <laughs> it takes a different route. You know the old TS gets to get deep down into this motherfucking nitty gritty. The new TS, I'd be like. You know, yeah, I just be like, girl, I got to be working out here in these streets. I understand the difference. A bitch can make a phone call and your bag could be diminished. Yeah, quick. I've seen, oh, it's happened. It has happened. But a bitch can make a phone call and they could build your bag. They could build your bag. It could, it could go one or two ways. Because I think I have a theory as to how, well, I know how I got the Ellen gig. But I have a theory as to why it was given to me. And I think it kind of has something to do with the whole, like, all-star situation. You know, but I was like, a trade-off. You still thank him. Hmm. You still thank him. Yeah. Even when you... Oh, yeah! Like I'm saying, it's 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 nothing but love. It's nothing but love. I, I have bitter moments, but... It, it still comes back around to you are blessed. You have a moon man in your house. You have your own house. You ain't living on nobody's floor. You are comfortable. You're able to come and go as you please. You work for yourself. You don't have to get up and go to nobody's job. It, it, Drag Race has afforded those opportunities. And, and like I said, little things like this, being able to come and be on somebody else's platform mm-hmm. and showcase myself, like I'm so hum, I'm, I'm humbled by it because 
coming from Miami, it, this, oh. it, it wouldn't be, it really honestly wouldn't be this. Had I not got my ass up and came to Atlanta, baby, I wouldn't be this person. I wouldn't have been on TV. Just like I feel like if I'd have stayed in Miami, I wouldn't have been T.S. Madison. No. Well, um, I, I don't, who knows? I don't think Because so. I think you, you, he, you business savvy anyway. Your mentor has always been chase your bag. So whether you here or there, you were going to make your coin. Regard. But it's just a, it's just a, it's just a who was placed in your life, who mm-hmm. who was there to encourage, to give you an encouraging word, uh, uh, and to tell you to move forward in this. You know, I don't know if I would have had those that same situation had I not moved here. So moving to Atlanta has been a gift for both of us. Oh, yeah. Us crossing each other's path in each other's life has been a gift for both of us. You get what I'm saying? Like. I encourage you to go on drag race. We, I go, I get that to the tape. RuPaul out there screaming out this, and then she and I had our friendship ever since. That shit was. Let me tell you something, Auntie. That shit was so magical to see because, and me and Tasha were talking about this the other day. The whole it's season. It's beautiful how you just manifest certain things. Mm-hmm. We sat in that living room and you just talked about going to show and and, and you know th- this uh, this would be good for you and you talented and. Even to this day, I don't see in myself what other people see in me. My friends were just telling me at my birthday dinner, like, even after all these years, you still you still don't give yourself enough credit. And I, for me, I'm kind of happy about that because I know bitches it keeps who, you humble. who toot their own horn and, and, and don't know how to just, you know, be and they, humble about They horn things. louder than they motherfucking they, hoeing. Your pussy ain't good, mama. It's like wet dope. It won't sell <laughs> nowhere. Yeah. Period. Period. <laughs> Girl, there, you, got, you got me over here in this element <laughs> on the spotlight. Yeah, it's but, okay though. You know, cause I'm talking to, I, I'm, but it's real shit. People, I'm, they just is these girls and they own these, they own these, 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 these horses. And like you said, these bitches will never be able to do half of the shit that I've done. And I'm still the same person I was years. I still feel like a little girl in certain situations. Mm-hmm. I still respect my peers in this industry in a certain level, even. You, you still auntie, yeah. you, you know, say a bitch certain things yeah. I want to say around. You know, yeah. it's just, I have that, that but, respect but, for and, people. And then, like you that. know what you told me one day? You said, Ru don't treat, don't treat us like he treats you. No. And you know what, who got on my ass about that? Todrick. I, me and Todrick Char- was, I was at his apartment. He was, I was helping him do his makeup, trying to teach him how to do makeup for Kinky Boots. And I was venting. Mm-hmm. And, he, you know, saying that at the reunion, Rue got in the elevator. He spoke, got out the elevator, you know, and I was like, why he don't, why they don't ever like send us emails or why she can't never send us no personal email saying happy birthday or happy, Merry Christmas or, you know, damn, I mean, why, you know, why you feel that way? And quickly, she don't owe you shit. You are who you are right now in your life because this woman granted you an opportunity to, to be where you are in your life. Rupa don't owe you a goddamn thing. At, 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 after you got on that show and whatever it is, hello, goodbye is all she owe you. Anything else extra, you should find yourself, you know, you should consider yourself grateful. And I know from viewers watching, you probably think, bitch, she, RuPaul ain't that person. Like, you know, she should. But on the flip side, she don't owe me shit. It would be nice, <laughs> if, you know, to, you know, but she don't. But there has been interviews where she's mentioned me. Mm-hmm. Personal interview, sit down with somebody else, you know. So I know I'm not forgotten, and I'm sure every accomplishment that we make, she sees. She like a mother. She just lurking in the back, you know. I know in spirit that she sees my accomplishments and stuff. So it is what it is. And whenever I do get to see her again, I would love to hug her neck and just say thank you, thank you for the opportunity that you've given me. It's honestly a really humbling thing for me, you know. But like I said, Todrick, he t- he 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 took that out of me because I was so bitter, like. I feel like you know she should she should care more about us, and there's a lot of girls who still feel that yeah. way. Yeah, but that's why she cared to enough on. to let you on the show. Yeah. <laughs> what else do you expect for her to do? Yeah. It's just like with just like every opportunity that I get, because you know, Rue does send me happy birthdays and things like that. You know. But y'all were able to y'all, y'all your work relationship was different. The work with you ain't come in on no competition. You came in on a him. I'm a fan. How are you? I'm a fan. How are you? Oh, let's have a drink. And then whatever blossomed from there, you were able to adapt, build that type of relationship versus you auditioning for the show, getting on, and then you just forever T.S. Madison, the girl who was on season, blase, blase. No, you know? And then for those who do have a relationship from Drag Race, they were put in predicaments or around them or live in L.A. to be in certain places to get 
to be around him more. You know, to come to the pop-up shops and all that other stuff. That's why I say living in California is an advantage. It's been many times that I wanted to go out there, but I don't have the financial resources to do so. It's expensive as shit. If something happened, I don't have no family out there. Like, there's a lot of cons versus pros. Me going out there. The only pro is making money and doing shows. So you, so you do want to actually live out in LA. I wanted, I wanted to move out there because I felt like it would help me. It would enhance your career. But I also feel like Atlanta is becoming not Black Hollywood no more, but Hollywood slowly but surely. And those same opportunities there, some way somehow, could be grasped here. You just got to be patient. And, and be in the, you know, in the right spaces. I want to ask you something that might be a hard question for you to answer. Yeah, question hard, I got this. This one. And this is. Part, it's really tasty. Girl, <laughs> girl, you know, it got me over no, here. I, no, I, I, no, I, I, I had to pull her down because I was like, wait a minute. I know, girl. I done picked it up. Mm-mm. I like wine. It's, mm. it's a good Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm-mm. So, I'm going to ask you this question, and I want you to be as honest as possible. Mm. Or not just a question. I'm going to bring up a name. Mm-hmm. And I just want us to do our last two, three minutes. Tyra Sanchez. Mm-hmm. Versus RuPaul versus World of Wonder. What's your, your take on that? I don't know the inside. Because when you win, when you th- when you win or you're in there, your relationship and the conversation is different. We all outsiders looking in. I don't know exactly what transpired with them that made her feel the way that she felt to make her say the things that she said, you know, towards RuPaul. But something happened. Something, you know, because there's one thing when your environment makes you feel wanted, appreciated, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But there's another thing where you just feel, where you don't feel like what's going on is right, or it's just, just you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And she ain't no idiot. Like, Tyra not dumb. So you already know you're black, so you got that card against you. You know, you can't say certain things, but she has been venting in a way that comes from, that seems like it's coming from frustration and aggravation and something that may have been stemmed from something that was happening for, for quite some time. So I think what she did came from somewhere, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. And because of that, like everybody got a whiff up. When no, no, when nobody's safe, even myself, like she even read the shit out of me online. I'm like, I ain't did nothing. I li- I still to this day live and breathe for Tyra. I live and breathe for her. One of the most beautiful queens I've ever uh, seen. Yes, very and, beautiful. And what really hurts me about her career was, is when she first won, I just kept thinking to myself, the bitch is the new, the new RuPaul. You tall as shit. You're absolutely beautiful. You photograph lovely, like, ads. And, like, she finna be, bitch, she finna be a Vogue. She finna be doing this. She finna be doing that. And she could have. Something somewhere didn't spin the way it was supposed to. And it ain't been a, ain't been a black girl to win like her yet. Mm. Ain't been ain't ain't there's you you got your models you got your you know your your uh, Violet Chachki and your fame and all that you know you got a shitload of models but you ain't had a black model since Tyra and she ain't she ain't knocking on nothing and I it's not even and I don't even think that it's not to this day that she can't knock on nothing because if she had the right management somebody can get her in like you said you are forever and always Dean Drag Race that's gonna hold ain't a bitch in the industry don't know what RuPaul's Drag Race is Believe today. It. Believe it. Ain't a bitch in the industry don't know. It don't matter what it is. I done auditioned for two TV shows, and they done emailed me back just solely because I said Trinity K. Bonet, but, uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, you were, and that's the first thing. Oh, you were on Drag Race? You know, and then they want. So I don't think it's that. I think something happens in the industry where when, so, first of all, a lot of people can't take defeat. And when you are defeated too many times, you are discouraged. And when you're discouraged, it's hard for a lot of people to come back off of like, oh, well, let me get back into that mm-hmm. because they scared that they're going to be defeated again. Mm-hmm. And I think when it comes to Tyra, although I see her sort of kind of trying to migrate back into it, I think it's still a, she's holding, you know, because you still don't know these people. 
and you got a handful of people saying, oh, we support you, we're glad you're back, but you still got all these motherfuckers on Reddit and everywhere else that's she this, she that, she this, she that, she this, she that. Like with me, I had an incident where with everybody, well, people say I'm transphobic because of me and Peppermint. What and happened? Pepper, I mm-hmm. want you to elaborate on what happened. Oh, and thank you for this, Pepper, so I can talk about it finally. Mm-hmm. I can clear the air. So me and, uh, so Peppermint was on her season, Peppermint, Shea kool you know, the top three, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, Sasha Velour. They did their lip syncs, blah, 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 blah. Everybody, uh, I was on my live feed, and people were like, well, who do you think should have won? And I said, well, I personally felt like Sasha Velour turned it for me, you know, even though she was, you know, like, I felt like she won. Um, who did you think should have won? I was there. You, you like, did you like Sasha? I do, I like Sasha. I like all the girls, because we're going to talk a little bit, because I like all the girls. I feel like that I should have been a judge a long time ago. Cause every, cause every single season they use my catchphrases, they use my lingo. Well, I was gonna ask you about they before. not, they not, they do, they do a, they, they, <laughs> they did a nod to me. They always do not. Silky Nutmeg Ganache yeah. was, did the, you? was the only girl that came and gave and paid tribute to T.S. Madison. Like no matter what anybody says out there in the world, T.S. Madison is a part of popular culture yeah. she's a huge part of popular culture yeah whether you know her or not or whether you just stumbled across her video or not bitch she's already she's done her her, her duty you get what i'm saying and still working bitch you know you you first of all you bigger than you know i be, i i could i bet you a hundred dollars <laughs> i bet you a hundred dollars right now i could walk up to 20 people 20 random people and ask them do you know who t.s madison is and they, they say might. yes. They might. I could. I could guarantee you. But listen, the only word one I'm worried about is when you ask Alexa. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey Siri. Cause, right. Because <laughs> twenty of them people ain't gonna. But you ask Alexa, Siri, Google, any of those girls, they know and they know what I've done. Wait, wait, wait. We got thrown off, girl. No, I gotta, I'm not. I gotta I'm tell not. You. I'm there. Okay. So you asked me, did I like Sasha Velour? I did. I was there. I watched Sasha. I watched Peppermint. I watched Shea Kool Aid. I, wa- I was sitting on front row. Right. And Trinity. And Trinity. And Trinity, Trinity. right. I'm from the South. I grew up in pageants, watching going to pageants, you mm-hmm. know, Miss Flea Market USA. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about that. That's where I, that's the very first pageant I saw. Alexis Gabrielle Sharon to won that year. Miss Flea Market USA. Yes, Miss Duval. Miss Duma. I'm a former. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Girl. Miss Continental, Miss Black Universe. I'm used to driving to Atlanta for the universe. You get what I'm saying? That's what I used to be social with the girls. Bitch, I know a lip sync. (laughs) When you see one. Yes, the songs are chopped up in pieces so they can get through the segment of the show. It's taped. But bitch, nobody was lip syncing to me. It was lots of cart. It's a lots of cartwheels, need, flips. Reboot. It's a lot of cartwheels, flips, and props. <laughs> Lip syncing is when them girls be in it, like you destroyed all of your competitors. That salt and pepper, boom. Oh, girl, I was drunk. Let me tell you. You know, they, on, on your off days, they give you little bottles of wine and stuff. So, girl, I knew I was lip syncing that day, and I was frustrated. So, I had drunk all my bottles of wine that they gave me. That's all that was. Assassinated. Like, every so, time that you've done a lip sync, like, I'm, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> well. It wasn't lip sync to me, but it, I get it. I get it. But once again, it's a television show, so I get it. And you got to pick somebody. Like, we, we got to pick. We can't. <laughs> I did like Sasha. I did like Peppermint. You know, I liked all the girls. It's, it's very difficult when you like the girls. Right. You know, but what did you say that okay, people so, think that you were transphobic? Okay, so what happened was, is after all that was said and done, they said, you know, well, who do you think should win? I said, well, I thought Sasha won. And then somebody made the comment and said, well, um, no, I think that Peppermint should win because she's the best representation for the trans community. And I said, well, no, I don't agree. I don't think that she's the best representation of the trans community because in my eyes I don't feel like she represented the trans community fully on the show. I say that to say because on all the confessionals when she was doing the confessionals she had a blonde fade 
and you know she had a big t-shirt on there wasn't a lash a hoop earring no bronzer no face powder no nothing it was really dull really just regular and i knew prior to her being on the show that she lived her life as a woman not that aesthetic that she gave on the show but you know walk out of society dolled up so knowing somebody prior to them being on it the first thing i thought was either she chose to go out here like this or they asked her to go out here like this because they wanted to you know piece the story together they want to of course a couple episodes into it she came out as transgender but you have this whole society of people who don't know her thinking, oh, she's coming out, you know, but she had already, she had already been living as a woman. Mm -hmm. So as a person who knew it, it just felt like, I hate to use the word selling out, but it was like, well, damn, girl, like, why won't they, why wouldn't they allow her to go in, come in off the rip, being who she truly is versus conforming to them, you know, but after all of that, because I said that, Everybody was like, oh, well, you can't say what women, how women look and how they come and how they sh they come in all shapes and sizes and you're transphobic and all this other stuff. And I never meant to offend Peppermint or say anything about her womanhood because I would never address her as man. I would never disrespect right. her and no such. Right. I know that there are butch women and they're this and that, but I also know the type of woman that she carries herself as and it wasn't the woman right. that was on that show. So you were speaking of a Peppermint that you knew prior to the show, which is 24-7 Peppermint. Exactly. Right. Okay, I get it. And from that, it came across as, oh, where well, you're being transphobic because you're telling people that they have to, you know, conform or be a certain type of way or be a certain type of girl. I'm just, I'm only speaking on the type of women that I was raised around. And the type of women I'm raised around, I don't give a fuck where they going. They not, but you not, you're not. Like you had that conversation with Fame sitting here. Mm -hmm. You can call yourself what you want to call yourself, mm -hmm. but you're not going to disrespect me. Right. And every girl I know feel the same way. You're not going to disrespect me. I don't give a damn if I come out here in Jordan's a, a, a wife beater and a do-rag. If I, if I told you when you meant me to call me woman, that's what you need to respect me as. Right. And that's how I felt they should have respected her. Come to find out at DragCon, L.A., just passed. I hadn't spoke to Peppermint since that came out. Now, when was her season? Three, four years ago? I had never spoke to her. We finally sat down, and I said, well, I want to apologize to you because I think I said something that, I had all good intentions on, but it didn't come out the way that it was supposed to. Basically misconstrued. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And society took it upon themselves. And even to this day, to this day, people still write Trinity transphobic Bonet under like post and stuff like Don't that. Too. Oh, of course not. Because I know I'm not. And I talked to her and she said, I thank you for, you know, having this conversation with me because, you know, I did. Basically, she said. I did dummy myself down for the for the show mm -hmm. to com to to, to make, compete to compete, comp you know in 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 that arena. Mm -hmm. She did dummy herself down, so I what it wasn't all necessarily me. Like I wasn't losing my mind. She did dummy herself down a little bit, you know. She said, "Well, thank you for noticing that and you know speaking upon it and just being real with me and transparent." And now we we gorgeous, and I wanted it to be that way because I think she's fucking amazing mm -hmm. she's so talented mm -hmm. so humble so sweet intelligent like no other so it was i felt good about that and no matter what the people think like who could care less well, but that's what that was right right and my last question to you before we step out of here is to, to bring it back around to, yes go to bring it back around to what we just talking about rupaul's drag race and rupaul are under heavy attacks by not being quote unquote all inclusive, meaning they've kept trans women out of the competition. And as Peppermint said, she had to dummy down in the competition to compete. Do you, know you what, think that it's fair? Because I mean, my first my first encounters with drag with with drag was from trans women, because what people need to understand that drag is not an identity. No. Drag is not an identity. Drag is not an identity. It's a uniform. Drag is not an identity. It's a what? A uniform. Boom. It's, it's an uniform. expression. It's a form of expression. So trans women can't be drag queens. <laughs> they can't compete in drag pageants. They can't compete on RuPaul's Drag Race. 
Now, I'm playing devil's advocate, and then I'm gone, girl, because it'll get real nasty. <laughs> you know, majority of the time, they like for you guys to walk around there with no shirt on. Mm-hmm. I think they want to differentiate between the uniform and the identity. Yeah. I think that that's the big part of it. And, and I don't think that it's necessarily that they have anything against trans women. Yeah. I just think that they want to differentiate to society to show this is the identity, this is yeah. the uniform. Even though yeah. identity can wear a uniform, we're still dealing with a mass public out there that may not want to, that may want to understand in tidbits yeah. and drops. But it, it start with rule. It start with rule. He immediately walk in the room in a suit. Immediately. Mm-hmm. And he's in that suit the whole show up into that last little piece. It starts with him, and we are boys. The majority, the, the sixty-five percent of the show, we were boys. It starts with RuPaul. It, it, it. First of all, has there even ever been a transgender judge? I think Candace Kane has judged. It has she? I'm not sure. I haven't. We had to Google that. If not, then. If, if not, then she's the one and only. Personally, ain't no reason why you shouldn't have been on, have not been on that judge's panel. That's just me. But th- that's a whole other subject. I just wanted to get that out. Ru- she should she should have been judged a show a long time ago, bitch. My seasons, y'all was you, you knew it in. Anyway, um, when it comes to the girls, I feel like. They okay. First of all, they tried with Gia when they let Gia on All Stars, <laughs> and I what I have heard people say is is they when it comes to when it came to Gia was it was kind of like looking at there was not much of a separation because in confessional she kind of like and then you know she just like she just put some stuff on put her costume on and then she was on stage and you know so there wasn't much of a separation but i don't think that's fair and in all fairness to me they try to like rap gia as being the first transgendered girl on the show for real for real but gia hadn't even had her comp her her augmentation augmentation yet she was still you know in in mid transition now granted she i respect her woman so she called herself transgender on the show then that's what i respect it as too Mm -hmm. but you still Want the first girl on there with titties compete. Now the first girl who's been on there with who's been on the show with breasts is Sonique, which was the Christmas special. She did the Christmas special. She's been the first girl, but she also was on there prior to. Um, then Monica Beverly Hills was first. Mon- no, but Monica was enough. These were all coming out. There's never been one girl on the show who competed in a season. Everybody was coming out. Uh, Monica. So Neek, what's the little short one? Real, real short. Kenya, Kenya. Michaels. And they're all these are girls now. All these are full girls. Carmen Carrera. Carmen Carrera. Everybody, yeah, everybody was still in that mid-transition. So there has not been one girl that has got the opportunity. The only girl who has been on that show was Peppermint. But they still, it still came out as, oh, I'm coming out as transgendered seven episodes in. I don't know what the hangup is as to why they won't just put the girls on the show, but because it's such a big controversial thing, and I know y'all got the money and y'all got the fan base, just give the girls a show. Y'all created this, create that. And we ain't say we gotta change the host. Ru, we know you mother, you can host that too. We ain't gotta go get no. We ain't gotta go call uh, Dominique or uh, MJ Rodriguez or, Car- or we ain't gotta. Or maybe we can call Candace Kane, call some of your girlfriends that are transgender and, and give them an opportunity to, you know, give their community a little shine. There's enough airtime and TV time and, and gay is ru- ruling right now. Anything gay, everybody want to be a part of, they want to watch, they tune in, they, 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 D, D, what's it called? DBR. D, DBR on it. They want to see it because they're intrigued by it. Mm. And they still haven't really got the opportunity. They've seen the transgender girls on polls. They've seen the transgender girls on the news. But y'all ain't seen the girls in competition. Y'all ain't seen them in their element. And I, bitch, I know some sick things. Them queens. 
who are sickening drag queens. They'll come through and tear bitch. that, tear that <laughs> RuPaul's tear, Drag Race tear down. Me, I'm trying to... Oh, I know. Chevelle. Alexis Gabrielle Sherrington. Baby, that'll come tear that RuPaul's bitch. Drag Race yeah. down. They're like, whoa. Now any, 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 any femme queen out of Florida that do pageants and shows. They're like, like whoa, now this is drag. Yeah. Yeah. And because they have the means to really, you know, do certain costumes and stuff of that nature. I know people who are, cause my one of my closest friends, Ava Chanel Alexander, is sitting right here. One of the funniest people I know can sew her ass off. Great television. Great television. Would have fans all over the world. Just off of personality, she just happens to be transgender. Y'all already know what y'all were looking for. I think one thing about transgender women is, is in the sense that you have to remember the format of the show as well. They want you to be funny. They want you to be witty. They want you to be quick. They want you to be open to ideas, things of that nature. And they and want so you to go from a boy to a girl. <laughs> so this is why we're back at the point of they want to differentiate between well, I'm taking that part out. identity and the uniform. So I'm devil's advocate on this thing here. They want to show these boys. But there are girls who have who have identity in uniform. There are some girls who... But they're no longer boys. And drag is not just assigned to boy to girl. It's it's butch drag. What is it? Like king drag kings? King and, drag kings. But and... for RuPaul's Drag Race, I'm playing a real deep devil's advocate here. Yeah. For RuPaul's Drag Race, you got to go... You got to, mm, 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 mm. you got to be boy, boyish, boy something. Just a, well, I mean, girl. I see, if we're going to be fed in, let's just say this. Okay, fine. American Idol, it's a singing competition. Bitch, if you a dancer, don't get mad because we won't let you audition for this show because you're a dancer. Mm -hmm. This show was based off of singing. This is what it is. RuPaul's Drag Race was based off of boys who get in drag, doing drag. That's what it is. The, when it, the first competition reality show was American Idol. The dancers wanted something too, then they created so you think you can dance. Mm -hmm. Something will be, somebody will create something for the girls or give the girls that opportunity. It's coming. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's coming because I think it's only fair. But that's the people format, girl. That's what they want. That's what they want. And that's how I feel about it. That's what they want. That's what they want. Like, what can we do? That's how I feel about it. It ain't like it's not successful. Oh, yes, it's very successful. And it has launched careers. And there are girls affiliated with. The show. You may have not been one when you were on there, but you but you you will forever and always be considered a Rue girl. Carmen Carrera, right. Kenya Michaels, mm -hmm. uh, Monica, Monica Beverly Hills, Hills Sonique. Sonique. You will always Jiggly. be Jiggly, Jiggly. Kelly. You will always be considered a Rue girl, and you are a transgender woman. There are there are transgender women affiliated with RuPaul's Drag Race. You did compete. Cause mentally, when you were there, you were a girl. You may have not like, you may not been what you the wanted body wise, but you was in there. In the but spirit. you was in there in the spirit. I shot there have been shot. girls there. Ooh, my body. So, you know, hopefully, you know, they they let a let a, a full fledged woman in, you know. But if they don't, I'm still watching. And y'all, yeah, and y'all still rocking, mm -hmm. still killing the game. Y'all yeah. all over TV. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Trinity K. Bonet, it has been an honor and a pleasure to have you sitting next to me drinking up this wine. Because this wine, a little, this a little, it got a little it kick to it. Though. It got a little kick to we it. We done, though. but I mean, we finished. But God follow. damn, you can have, no, you can't have all this. I no. got to have a little bit more. Yeah, because you got to eat that with your food. I want to know what is next for you, Trinity, before we leave. Oh, okay. So, as of right now, in thirty seconds. Okay, we're gonna work on. Well, I'm I'm wrestling bound all year long, so. We promoting the Westland system all year long. It's gonna be um, Westland Diaries, which I have on my YouTube, my Facebook, my Instagram. Which is Trinity K Bonet. Everything. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing some music. I wrote two songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So hopefully that music could be out by the summertime because they summer hits. They they real Miami, real city girl tees. Mm -hmm. I gotta I gotta stay authentic to who I am as a person. Like I'm pageantry. I like you know, but I'm good. It is what it is. Um, acting. Hopefully do some web series to kind of just like build myself up a little bit. I feel like the web series are a little more dummy down. You can mm -hmm. kind of coach your way through that. So I want to act a little bit more. And like I said, just push myself to get on this red carpet. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it, but I'm just trying to pray on it and hope that God puts me in the you right direction. Say, of people. I tell everybody that comes here, you don't know when, but you know. Yeah. 
It's gonna happen. Take that with you. You don't know when, bitch. But, but you, you know. know. And it's not your status. It's your status. It's your status. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this has been a spotlight session with TS Mass and Trinity. We thank you so much for coming here. Hug my neck. I'm so glad that I was able to speak into your life and you blew up to be the girl who you are today. <laughs> Period. God damn it, the girl. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be back in this basement soon. It's very soon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we gone. It was so good rocking with you tonight. Thank you. Bye. Bye, y'all.